Hi everyone, my name is Sheldon Loanyu and I'm a field engineer here at Rancher Labs. I will be giving you a virtual demo today of K3S, our lightweight Kubernetes distribution. K3S itself is very simple to set up and use, so I'll try to create a fun demo illustrating its ease of use and its potential. I hope you enjoy. Now let's get started. Before we get started, let's have a quick look at what K3S is and how it works. K3S is our CNCF certified lightweight Kubernetes distribution built for IoT and edge computing. However, we are seeing it being used in other environments as well, including the cloud and data centers. K3S is packaged as a single binary and contains everything it needs to set up a Kubernetes cluster. By rule of thumb, the minimum you need is a modern Linux kernel that supports C groups. K3S contains everything else needed to set itself up, including for starting out with a fully functional Kubernetes cluster with ingress, service load balancer, network plugin, storage provisioner, container runtime, and much more. By default, K3S uses embedded SQLite for a single master cluster, but can also be integrated with either MySQL, Postgres, or MariaDB for an HA setup with an external database. And of course, you can also use etcd. No need to set up all components manually, as you only need one binary to create your servers and agents. K3S by default also uses ContainerD, but you can also use Docker or choose an alternative CRI implementation. Another useful aspect is that agents don't need to open up incoming ports to the nodes. The agent connects to the server through the tunnel proxy that sets up a tunnel, which is then used for bidirectional communication. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's jump into the demo. Let's set up K3S. In its simplest form, all you'd have to do is this. But we're going to add some parameters so it better fits our environment. With my command, I'll be adding Docker as a container runtime, setting the correct kubeconfig permissions, binding and advertising on the correct IP, and configuring the API server to more frequently check if a node is down. This is just for demo purposes. Running the default command, and this one, will set up a single node cluster. So the server will also be able to run workloads. This is now downloading the latest binary, setting up the systemd unit files, creating symlinks, and it has even created an uninstall and kill all script. So we can easily clean up everything K3S has installed and configured. When it's done doing its thing, we'll have a fully functional single node Kubernetes cluster to play with. And there we go. Let's check if everything worked as planned. And there's our single node cluster now ready to be used. Now that we've got our server set up, let's set up our agents. In order to do that, we're going to need a token that has been generated. This token is located in this location. Let's copy that and then we'll export it and paste it in my other nodes. As you can see, I've got one control plane and five worker nodes. Now all of them have that token, and I will now try to add them to my existing Kubernetes cluster. This is the command that we're going to use to initialize our agents. As you can see, it's going to get the same binary, but now I'm also adding in that token I just exported, and I'm pointing it to our server. This will automatically let K3S know that this is only an agent and it won't deploy the server aspects. Also, since I changed the server to more frequently look if the node is down, I'm going to upgrade the frequency at which the node is going to send its updates. As you can see, it's doing almost exactly the same thing, only now it's only installing the agent and not the server component. In the meantime, you'll see that the ones that are already ready are going to start coming up as soon as they're available. Now let's start deploying the application. But before I can do that, I need to first create a registry secret so my application can access my private Docker Hub repository. To do this, we will run kubectl create secret, and this will be a Docker registry secret with the name recred. Then I'll add in my username, but we'll fill out my password and email off screen, of course. We can then validate the secret creation by executing kubectl git secrets. And there we go, there's my secret. So far, you haven't seen the infrastructure yet. However, this will be crucial for the application I'm about to launch. Here you can see my six node Raspberry Pi cluster. The eight pixel LED strips represent a node and eight free spots on that node for running applications. Now let's launch the application by going to the location where I've cloned my Git repo. Here I have a pixel controller.yaml and it contains a configuration to deploy a daemon set in my cluster. 
This daemon set will run on every node and will provide the controller for enabling and disabling those LEDs whenever the application is deployed or is deleted from one of the nodes. The controller will run in the pixel controller namespace. So let's first create that by running kubectl create namespace pixel controller. Why don't I just have that in the same manifest? Well, good question. Now let's also watch the pods as they come up and create the resource by running kubectl create dash f for file pixelcontroller.yaml. This could normally take a few minutes, but of course, with the power of video editing, I've sped it up a bit, so there we go. Everything is done. This took some time because the Raspberry Pis had to download pretty big images. Now let's go ahead and install the actual application itself that's going to be activating, well, triggering the activation of the LEDs. Let's watch while those pods come up as well. Let's go to the single pixel.yaml file. Here you can see it's just a deployment with a single replica that'll deploy basically a single pixel application which will activate one of the pixels of the eight LEDs. Let's run it by doing a kubectl create dash f single pixel. And here you can see it just spins up one replica. Just added that so I can see on which node it's actually running. Now let's scale up the amount of replicas by doing kubectl scale deploy. And then the name of the deployment, of course, dash dash replicas. And then we'll add in a couple of more, 10 maybe, replicas. So while that's spinning up, let me show you what's actually happening on the Raspberry Pi cluster. Here you can see while the application is actually starting up, the LEDs are also activating on the Raspberry Pi. Now that we've done a bunch of manual terminal work, let's manage and use the cluster in an easier way, as you might want to manage many of these types of clusters. For this, we'll be using Rancher, our multi-cluster Kubernetes management solution. You can easily import the Raspberry Pi cluster by just going to add cluster and then import cluster. Now let's give it a name and hit create. Here we can get the kubectl command we need. So all we have to do now is paste that on our server. As you can see, a bunch of resources have now been added to this cluster and the Rancher cluster agent and node agent have been spun up. Now, if we go to Rancher, you can see that the cluster is ready and available to use from the Ranch management interface. We can see the metrics and go to the nodes available in our cluster. Here you can see the taint I added to the control plane node and all of my available workers. If I click on the control plane node, you'll see that we get a bunch of information about the node itself. Of course, architecture, versions, things like that, but also the actual command that we ran K3S with. So we can go back and see how any imported K3S cluster was actually run. Of course, there's a bunch more information we can see, the configuration for the tools that have been used in the environment. And we can do that for the workers as well, of course. So, of course, the agent node had a lot smaller command, but we can also see that from here as well. If I go back to my cluster and then to the project, then you'll see we have the actual workloads running in that environment. And here you can see this, the single pixel deployment with zero replicas. And if I start scaling up from within Rancher, the same as doing it from the terminal, we see that the application gets launched on the Raspberry Pi cluster on one of the worker nodes. And we see the pixel or the LED actually activating. If I scale up the amount by editing the deployment and not just pressing on the plus button, you'll see the same thing happening again. 
of course this is just a visualization of basically any application deployment as we can see the deployments are almost completed and if we go back and try to bring down the amount of replicas using the UI exactly what we expect is happening in that rancher is scaling down my replicas for me and now I'll show you another thing that of course normally you can do in rancher and that's of course manage your storage as well here you can see you could create your own persistent volume if you'd like but as you can see in your storage class we already have a local path storage class available this is there because as I showed you before as well K3S installed the local path provisioner and this allows us to then also start using dynamic storage creation however this just uses the local disks of the machine itself of course we can also go in and look at all of the namespaces available as we can see the pixel controller namespace we've got our daemon set running i want to move that to the default project so i can see the actual resources in that project as well of course i could have created one with a, a pixel controller project but i'll just put it in default for now as you can see now we see the single pixel and the pixel controller resources in our environment as you see the daemon set on every worker node in my environment so you can watch all of these resources and manage them from within Rancher, including things like secrets, certificates. You can see the registry credential that I just created as well. And of course, you can also deploy applications to that Raspberry Pi cluster. Now let's have some fun. Well, I hope some more fun. Let's set up Cube Invaders and execute some chaos engineering on our not so helpless K3S cluster. In order to do that, we'll first need to set up a service account and cluster role binding for the Cube Invaders application. Then we need to get the token belonging to that service account. Now let's copy that token and open up the .cubeinf file in our home directory. In this file, we can configure a Kubernetes endpoint, credentials, and which namespaces we want to be able to wreak havoc in. Now let's save this and go back to the cluster. If you haven't played around with Cube Invaders, I would highly recommend checking it out. You can just do a Google search for Cube Invaders and you'll find it on a Kubernetes.io blog. The author is Eugenio Marso from SourceSense and it's fully open source. So you can also get the code and tweak it to your liking. I have not deployed it into my cluster as the images aren't built for my architecture. But thanks to Eugenio, I can also just download the Mac application and point that to any cluster. So that's exactly what I did. As you can see, I can now play what seems like a fun little nostalgic game. But in the background, I'm actually killing pods in my cluster's default namespace. Currently, it's set to automatic, and of course, it has been sped up, but I could also manually play around with this, which I will. This nicely illustrates how Kubernetes actually responds, or at least should respond, when applications are going down. The more resiliency you build in, the less chances there are for you to get called in the middle of the night because of some app that just randomly fell over. I hope you've now seen that though K3S is mostly used for the edge and IoT, the possibilities are endless. Any embedded device with one CPU and one gig of RAM can be turned into a Kubernetes server and or agent. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching this demo as much as I loved shooting those aliens. Thank you so much for your time. If you have any further questions for us, please drop by our virtual booth and ask for one of our representatives. We'll be happy to answer any questions you might still have. Have a great day and enjoy the conference.